Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Corey Perkins here, and welcome to part 15 of What If Deku Was Trained by Stain. Just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. And so, let's begin. Shallow. It was an utter disappointment for the villain, whose knife was raised as she assessed the amount of blood she had gathered from the cut she inflicted upon Ururaka. You shouldn't have cut her in the first place. Just who are you? Asui, who was in the company of Ururaka, snarled. The act itself was common amongst villains, but she deemed the reaction unacceptable. I'm Toga. Toga's voice was muffled due to the gear she wore. However, both of the students never missed the dangerous glint of her eyes while they were told how cute they are. Pointing her knives at the two, she mentioned their surnames, which added to the intimidation and the increased feeling of danger. The exchange of lines between the three continued, but ended with Toga successfully drawing the blood of Ochiko, which was the reason why she was sitting on the ground when Midoriya and the others arrived. Toga met the greenish eyes of Azuku in particular and blushed at the sight of the young man. Midoriya noticed the wound on his classmate's arm, but was relieved when he found that it wasn't too serious. When he declared he wanted to run after the villain, he was abruptly stopped by Asui, telling him that engaging in an unnecessary fight won't be advisable since the combat engagement is for self-defense only. I'm just glad both of you are fine. Then it crossed upon his mind to tag along with them on their way to the camp. Let's all join together and head back into the camp. Right now, we're protecting Kachan as we proceed. With the idea of being in greater numbers for defense against the villains, they had a brief moment of relief, until it was shattered when Asui spoke of her concern. Midoriya-chan, I thought you and the others were with Bakugo-chan. Everyone turned their heads when the realization dawned upon them, for it wasn't just Katsuki who wasn't in the circle. Fumikage, too. Midoriya felt chills down his spine, as it seemed to be a failure against him. He just failed to keep both of his classmates safe, and in particularly, Bakugo, who happened to be the League's target for tonight. Are you perhaps looking for something? It was a voice laced with utmost mockery with the purpose to rile them up. The villain was indeed successful, especially when he revealed what seemed to be two marbles resting upon his palm. Perhaps the boy who's currently in my hand, along with the other... Give him back! Midoriya could only shout in his demand as the fight with Muscular claimed all the strength he had left. Mind going blank from the injuries he sustained, Izuku kept convincing himself to move or lose them at the hand of the villains. It seemed like Midoriya's protest was unheard, as the villain went on with his monologue, playing with the marbles as he did. Such talent is both wasted to the undeserving hero society. A smirk creeps past the edges of the villain's mask as he stopped toying with the marbles which, due to the villain's quirk, has Bakugo inside it. Give him back! Give him back! The villain repeated, albeit full of mockery once more. Strange. Have you hero wannabes forgotten that Bakugo doesn't belong to anyone? The villain's voice started having a mixture of irritation while he continued. The kid doesn't belong to anyone, you egoist! Shoto then decided to take action as his ice attack aimed to hit the villain for immobilization. Even so, the villain seemed to have predicted the onslaught and successfully evaded. He then proceeded with his point on why Bakugo Katsuki shall be in the hands of the villain tonight. A path that doesn't only belong to such false ideals of heroism and frantical values, do you know? There was a momentary pause as he landed on the tree farther from where he just stood. The society keeps pushing such stupid values onto them, things that aren't befitting of the ones he shows and of his talent. Although, I must admit, the other kid named Tokoyami will also be of a good cause to the League. Todoroki, on the other hand, remained pensive as he wondered how the villain managed to snatch up both of his classmates without emitting any noise to be noticed. Admittedly, Midoriya pondered just the same, as he glanced toward Todoroki with a stare hopefully to get across his silent plea, which was thankfully heard. Todoroki answered by repeating his ice attack he did earlier, only this time covering a larger area, hoping it would come in contact with the villain and effectively freezing him to retrieve both of their classmates. Dread traveled upon Midoriya's body as the next words echoed from the villain. Vanguard Action Squad, the target is secured. Head to the retrieval point in the next five minutes. This time there was only joy that could be heard from the villain, as he ended his message with, The show has finally come to a close. Come to a close? Todoroki repeated, yet Midoriya couldn't care less as he yelled in protest to the events that escalated. Immediately, they all ran after him, while some of the villains far away conversed on how they were able to succeed. Hey, hey, Dobby! Did you hear that? 
Mr. Compress succeeded. I thought I'd get sleepy with how slow he acted. However, the man whom the other one regarded as Dobby just sighed in disagreement with the claim. Don't say he did a good job. The conversation went on between the two, regarding the events that transpired tonight, with Dobby's slightly disappointed tone about the gas that was cleared. Unbeknownst to them from the bush they had passed was the shivering Aoyama from Class 1A, while some of his two other peers laid unconscious on the ground. Aoyama, who had heard the exchange between the villains, felt elated, for it meant that his peers were fighting, but it came crashing when he realized his eyes met Dobby's, prompting the villain to walk toward his hiding area. However, he was interrupted upon his companion's inquiry as to why the Nomu, which would respond upon only Dobby's voice, wasn't called during tonight's mission, in which Dobby replied that from tonight's occasion, it probably killed a person already, so he summoned it. Meanwhile, Mr. Compress, who had Bakugo and Takayama in his possession, was being sought after by Midoriya's group. They keep getting further away! Midoriya thought with desperation as he ran after the villain. However, that was when the idea had struck him. Uraka-san, make us float, and Asui-san, take us as far as you can with your tongue! Izuku then wasted no time for the next instructions towards his classmates. He might have busted his bones, but his mind still functioned well. We can do this, he told himself, shutting away any other thoughts as he focused everything on the retrieval of Tokiyama and especially Bakugo. Shoji-kun, use your arms to change our trajectory while in the air. Uraka-san has to make sure she keeps an eye on the distance to ensure proper timing of the release. At that moment, Shoji was able to figure out what they were about to do. They're about to follow the concept of a human bullet. Uraraka was quick to question Midoriya's current state during the chase. Deku-kun, are you sure you can still move with the number of injuries you have? It would be a wonder if you were to lose consciousness in the middle of this, Todoroki added. So he suggested that he stay and let them do the rest from here. Nevertheless, his suggestion was abruptly cut with the hell-bending determination that Midoriya plastered. I don't feel pain right now. I can still move, so hurry up! And so they commenced the human bullet. By Uraraka's touch, with Asui simultaneously wrapping her tongue around Shoji, Todoroki, and Midoriya. Make sure you save those two, Asui encouraged, finally throwing them into the air with all the force she could muster. And from the Vanguard Action Squad's retrieval point, where Toga explained she had only caught one person's blood during the whole search, the fall of Mr. Compress onto the ground rippled surprise amongst the villains as three students stood on his back, to which Toga took delight. One of them was the one who she bears her current interest. Give us Takayama-kun and Kachan! Compress, step aside. Dobby the villain whose face seemed to be stitched warned. Mr. Compress then complies as he gets himself out of the children's feet with his quirk. Bluish fire came toward them, an attack they barely anticipated, which both Todoroki and Shoji barely dodged, except for Midoriya, who wasn't as lucky as it undeviatingly hit his arm, which left him to scream in pain. Toga, with her hyped spirit, charged at Midoriya while she introduced herself and pinned him down. A knife being pointed at him was nothing new to Midoriya as he had his fair share of experiences. But the dread was still there, as it was near his neck. You'll look even lovelier if you bleed more, Izuku. She even seemed pleased as she took the force to stab him, but was suddenly thrown onto the ground as Shoji managed to grab her just in time. Meanwhile, Mr. Compress had emerged once more, and he made his way towards Dobby, who then asked where Bakugo was. He was most surprised to feel nothing when he patted the side pocket of his coat. We're now retreating! Midoriya! Todoroki! Shoji exclaimed. A smile of victory was printed on his face as he drew out the marbles that Mr. Compress just possessed moments ago. When Mr. Compress turned around, he found it fascinating. He even complimented how Shoji's quirk worked splendidly and successfully retrieved Bakugo. Little did they know that all was for naught when Dobby walked ahead. Move! I'm gonna catch them! However, cut off with the hand of ministration by Mr. Compress as he watched them run away as far as they can, only to be greeted by the Nomu and Kuragiri. The five-minute mark is up, he casually said, as if the fear that had crossed upon the faces of the three students were non-existent. Let us go, he announced a cue for the villains to their leave. Toga, whose knife was on Izuku's throat just a while ago, shyly waved with the promise that she'll surely meet with them the next time. The one who was accompanied by Dobby, just casually jumped into the portal. Wait, the goal isn't done yet, he announced, referring to the targets, which were held by the three students, still encaged in Mr. Compress's quirk. The basics of magic, Mr. Compress began, 
as he stared at the three students all beaten up with the false sense of security that they had managed to retrieve their classmates. He found fun in that as he proceeded to reveal his trick before he took flight. When something is flaunted, then something's hidden behind it. Then he revealed his stuck-out tongue. He really did find the children amusing as their relief morphed into horror, along with the realization of what he just did, of how he managed to trick them. There, rested atop his tongue, were the actual marbles of his quirk that hosted both Katsuki Bakugo and Fumikage Takayami. With a snap of his finger, the one in Shoji's possession turned into ice. Realizing they were tricked, they wasted no time to charge at them once more, their last attempt to retrieve their classmate from the grasp of the villain. Sadly, by the time they were finally able to figure out the secret of his quirk, which was the capability to compress and confine things, it was all a little too late. Thank you for indulging yourself in the story thus far. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes into the deep facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. On behalf of the We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. If you're perhaps interested in what we do here at WTC, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 and older to join our crew. You can find us on our Discord, which you can locate in the description below. Our Discord is an all-around fantastic place to be. All you gotta do is hit up the recruitment server and sign up for whichever category of work fulfills your interest. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Peace out, mortals!